Hi, my name is Randall Loy. I'm an infertility specialist in Orlando, Florida. Welcome. I wanted to say happy Thanksgiving to all of you in the United States. And I can't tell you how many times over the last 30 years I've been asked about this thing, a turkey baster. Obviously it does good things for moistening the bird, but we never use this in clinical practice. Now I'd like to talk today about obesity and reproduction. In a previous episode, we talked about body mass index or BMI, and please refer back to that. If you want to calculate your own BMI, go to your search engine and just type in BMI and you can see the height to weight ratio. Now a BMI of less than 18.5 is underweight. A BMI of 20 to 25 is normal weight. 25 to 30 is overweight. And then over here, greater than 30, a BMI of greater than 30 is obese. So it turns out that obesity is a pandemic. It is affecting the entire world. It's no longer a Western problem. People in the East are also experiencing being overweight and obese. And we know that approximately one in six people in the world, about a billion people or so, are overweight or obese. Now, with respect to fertility, the relationship between body weight and infertility is a classic U-shaped curve. Those patients who are underweight have higher infertility, as we get to a normal BMI of 20 to 25, normal fertility, and then as we go greater than 25 and 30, infertility increases. Among women with ovulation problems in the United States, 25% of those are attributable to obesity. And a recent clinical study has shown that moderate weight loss among those obese women help them with their conception attempts. If you are overweight or obese and you lose weight, your chances of having a baby are increased. Now I'd like to tell you about a Danish study. It's a large study of 12,566 patients, men and women, who went through more than 25,000 IVF cycles. And the question was, does obesity play a role in success? And what about female obesity? And what about male obesity? And it turns out that both are important. And the patients who had the least success in that huge study were the patients where both the men and the women were overweight or obese. Now the study also showed that when ICSI was used, the direct sperm injection into the egg cell, the findings were not as remarkable. So ICSI might be overcoming some obesity related factor. So the authors of this large Danish study suggested that weight loss prior to IVF would increase live birth rates, decrease the cost to society, and that means, of course, that patients who are overweight or obese have diseases like high blood pressure and diabetes that may cost a lot of money, especially in a socialized society. And finally, of course, weight loss will decrease the long-term health effects of obesity, as we just mentioned. So we know in men, for example, that with increased body mass index, the ratio of testosterone to estrogen it's changed. There can be decreased sexual function, decreased libido or sex drive, and maybe changes in sperm function. A study published in August 2013 in the journal Human Reproduction from Washington University showed that obese women are just as likely to become pregnant as normal weight women if they use donor eggs. Now that's not the solution for all overweight or obese women. But if an obese woman is in her early to mid 40s and desiring pregnancy, she's just as likely as her normal weight counterpart to take home a baby. I think the take home message there is that women who are overweight or obese should not be discouraged from using donor eggs if in fact they need donor eggs in the first place. Well, it is important to realize that if you can lose weight, if you can get back to a healthy lifestyle, it may improve your chances to have a baby. Remember this U-shaped curve. We go from infertility to infertility as we go from underweight to overweight. Now another story. This is true, absolutely true. And it happened in the second week I was in practice. Uh, as a little inside, women often don't know how far down to scoot on the table. So we say, please scoot down until you feel like you're going to fall off, but please don't. This lady scooted, but even when she quit scooting, things continued to move. And so I said, okay, please scoot down. Well, she was still a foot away. Okay, another few inches and another few inches. 
And so she got up on all fours, kind of on her elbows, and she gave one huge thrust. And she broke both stirrups and launched herself like a missile off the table, knocked me off my little round stool, and pinned me up against the wall. Her legs were buckled up underneath her. My nose, I think, was in her belly button. I'm not sure. The lights went out. I couldn't see or hear anything. And it took three nurses to pull her off. And so she got back up on the exam table and the nurses helped get her drapes and, and I, I was kind of trying to get back to normal and she said, now what do we do? And I said, I don't really know, this has never happened. She said, maybe we should light a cigarette. I smiled and she said, would you mind if I found another doctor? And I said, no, I, I think that would be thoroughly appropriate. And I said, listen, joy to meet you, you're a delightful lady and I certainly wish you well with your pregnancy pursuit. Thanks so much. Well, with that story in mind, as you're basting your bird today, you can think about my stories, probably not appropriate to tell grandpa and grandma. Have a great Thanksgiving celebration and we'll see you next time. Be sure to share this video with your friends and subscribe to catch all new episodes each week here on the Infertility Channel. Plus, follow us on Facebook and Twitter. I love hearing from you. Comment below or tell me what you want to see on future episodes by sending me an email to comments at infertilitychannel.org. Until next week.